guys, so in this video I'm going to just quickly run through Bud Powell style chord voicings. Now compared to modern chord voicings, uh, the Bud Powell style chord voicing is considered quite simplistic and naive and rudimentary, um, but sort of its simplicity is part of its charm. So essentially a Bud Powell style chord voicing consists of just two notes, the root down the bottom in the bass, and then either the third, the sixth, the seventh, or the tenth on top. The tenth, of course, being the same as the, as the third, just a, an octave up. So as you can see, this chord voicing is quite sort of simplistic, and you're effectively just playing sort of the shell of the chord. Now this type of voicing was used in the early bebop era by people like Bud Powell. And it actually has some advantages over sort of the more modern um, or some of the other left hand chord voicings that I covered in my previous videos. And so the main advantages of this type of chord voicing is firstly the fact that it is quite simple. So bebop is generally quite a fast paced up tempo style of jazz or genre. And so playing overly complicated chords in your left hand can sort of tie you up in knots and you can get lost and it can get a bit confusing and muddled. Whereas if you're just playing sort of really simple Bud Powell style shell chords, um, you can play really quickly and you can get through a lot of chords and it's quite simple to play. So if you were just to play a 2-5-1 in the key of C major, you could just play something like... Right, so that's just the root in the 7th on the D minor 7 the root and the 10th on the G7, and then the root and the 7th on the C major 7. Right, now that's quite easy to play. Um, if you can reach the 10th easily, of course. Otherwise you can just do the 3rd. And exactly that, because it's quite easy to play, um, it's... You can move through chords quite quickly without getting sort of tangled up or lost. And another advantage of this simplicity is that you're probably not going to get in the way of any improvisation that either you're playing on top or someone else is playing. Whereas if you're playing sort of the um, rootless Bill Evans style chord voicing, on the G7 you're playing the 9th and the 13th. If at that point the soloist, whoever that is, decides to play a flat 13 and to really like focus his solo around a flat 13, that can sound a little bit sort of clashy. Whereas with a Bud Powell style chord voicing, because you're just playing the root and just one other note that's quite sort of strong harmonically, because it's the third, the sixth, or the seventh, um, you're probably not going to get in the way of the soloist. He can essentially do whatever he wants. He can play flat thirteens or sharp nines or sharp elevens, do whatever, and he's not really going to clash with anything you're playing. Now, and the third and final advantage of this type of chord voicing that I'll mention here is that. Because, again, it's so simple, you're only playing two notes, and those notes are generally quite far apart from each other, like the 7th, the 10th, and the 7th again. That means you can play them lower down on the piano, or in a lower register. And it still sounds alright. Whereas the other left-hand chord voicings that I went over in past videos, like the rootless Bill Evans style chord voicing, or the Thelonious Monk style chord voicing, you can only really play them sort of in this register here, because if you get too low, it just starts to sound muddy and unpleasant. And so really, you're restricted to this sort of middle range of the piano if you're using those chord voicings. And that essentially means two things in relation to this uh, Bud Powell style chord voicing. The first is that you get a much sort of rounder, fuller tone because you've got a bass part and you can improvise sort of in this register here or even higher up. Whereas with the other, the Bill Evans and the Thelonious Monk style voicing, because your left hand's sort of restricted in the middle register and if you improvise in the middle or the higher register, it really sounds a little bit sort of hollow or empty without a bass part, unless you have a bass player, which you often do, and in that case, fine, it doesn't matter, you can stick around this part, um, this part of the piano. But if you don't have a bass player, it can sound sort of a little bit not quite finished. And so by playing this Bud Powell style chord voicing, um, you're introducing a bass part, and so you're giving the song, whole song a bit more form, and it sounds a bit more sort of completed and rounded. 
And the second thing that playing lower down means um, is that you can use this area to improvise. And this is quite a strong, sort of loud, powerful part of the piano, sort of the mid-range. Um, and so, if you're playing your left hand here, you're sort of restricted to the higher registers. By moving your left hand down here, you're adding in a bass part, and it means you can improvise in this sort of area here as well. And so you're not just rest restricted to the sort of soprano, light hour... sort of twinkly sounding part of the piano. You can play sort of in the more powerful middle register. So to give you an example of what this sounds like when you insert it into a song, um, let's take the song There Will Never Be Another You. Now, that'll sound like this. Right, so that's just um, section A of There Will Never Be Another You. And so you hear it sounds quite sort of powerful and strong and it's got that bass part and you can really sort of hammer away and still use this mid-range. Um, and it sounds sort of much more out there and like I said powerful and vigorous compared to sort of the other Bill Evans style um, rootless chord voicings that you can play. sounds sort of a bit daintier and fluffier um, compared to the really like right sounds simple yes but also sounds powerful and really sort of blares it out there cool anyway so that's all I wanted to cover um, thanks for watching guys as always feel free to leave questions or comments see ya